the Chelbles Canon excerpt to violin.lim colon page one of three. Welcome everybody to Webinar Wednesday from Sight and Sound Technology. My name is Stuart Lawler and uh, my colleague Carl Braley is with us as normal. Great to have Carl back with us in the room. We had a mammoth session last week uh, and uh, this week we're equally impressed and excited to have um, a guest with us and we'll introduce um, Bill McCann properly in just a moment. Just before we do that, however, if you'd like to engage with us during the session today, you can do that in a couple of ways using Zoom. You can raise your hand by pressing uh, Alt and Y using Windows, Command and Y using a Mac, or activating the raise hand option on your mobile platform. Or you can post in the chat window by pressing Alt and H on Windows, Command and H on the Mac, or again, activating the chat option on the mobile uh, app of choice. Now, we have a very big session today, a lot of people. Uh, we did get some questions uh, for Bill McCann by email prior to the start of the session. So we are gonna do our best to facilitate as many people as possible, but if we don't get to you, uh, we do apologize. And if your question is answered by From Luis somebody Morales, else, everyone. Luis Morales, um, please, please don't raise your hand to talk because we'll try and get through as many questions. I know there's gonna be lots of uh, interest and there has been lots of interest in this session. So we'll try and get through as much as we can. Now, um, Bill McCann is president and founder of uh, his own company, making accessible music uh, technology and braille music um, accessible for people since 1992. And Bill and I met, I think it was at the, well, the first time I met Bill was at one of the CSUN uh, conventions in Los Angeles around the year 2000 or maybe 2001. And then we brought Bill over to Dublin in 2001 to do a session at the National Council for the Blind. And Bill and I ended up drinking uh, orange juice in a, a well-known pub in the center of the city here uh, in Dublin called Mulligan's. Uh, but we have very much stayed in touch over the, over the many years. I've watched Bill's uh, company progress and the um, innovations that he has created have made music education a reality for so many people all over the world and indeed music as a profession for so many people all over the world. We're going to hear Bill's incredible story and hear about what he has to offer today and also I'm really really happy to say that um, Bill's products are now in the Sight and Sound product portfolio so if you hear about something today that you're interested in please get in touch with us. So Bill welcome to Webinar Wednesday. Well, Stuart, it's uh, great to be with you, and it, uh, I guess it's afternoon over there, uh, and wherever you're tuning in from, uh, people around around the globe. I understand we have an international audience uh, here in the states. It's just after 9 a.m. Uh, we have had our orange juice and our coffee, so we're all set. Okay, we're de we're, we're delighted around to the, have you. We're, yeah, we're we didn't even have to go around to Mull Mulligans to get it, but. Uh, <laughs> Okay, listen, let, let's talk a little bit, maybe just to, to start this, a little bit about what brought you to running your own business in what is still, but I guess in 1992, was a very, very niche area. Yes. Well, I guess the short version of that is uh, when, I, when I was a kid, all I wanted was music. I just wanted to play my trumpet. And uh, I had... Uh, wonderful mother who said, well, if you're going to be a musician, you need to learn to read Braille. She had heard about Braille music, found me a teacher, learned Braille music for six months uh, when I was about nine. And my teacher got married, moved away, and, and I never had any other teacher who knew Braille music. But I went on to study trumpet with a number of teachers, went to a local conservatory here, got my degree in music, uh, played a lot of classical and jazz music, in my uh, undergrad, got my undergraduate de degree, spent a, about a year, over a year, being a full-time musician, playing lots of churches and nightclubs and teaching blind and sighted kids trumpet, even sold some music. But at the end of that time, I said, I think I need to do something that has a little more steady income. So I learned to program computers in a, in a business course at the University of Pennsylvania here in Philadelphia and uh, took took an offer to work for an oil company. So for about 10 years, I was working in business programming, but all that time dreaming of making Braille music more accessible. Um, because as you know, and 
a lot of our listeners know, um, getting from the print page to the Braille page can be pretty tedious and time consuming, uh, labor intensive process. So I wanted to make a difference for that. And uh, uh, again, a long story short, by the time we got to late 1991, my uh, employer was looking to uh, reduce the workforce and offering a, a lot of nice incentives in cash and training for people who raised their hand and volunteered to leave. So I was one of those people. And um, that's when Dancing Dots got started. And that was 1992, which is hard to believe. Uh, that was some time ago. So you've been working away at this gig since 1992, but something you said to me a long time ago, and you and I talked about this when we were chatting off air the other day, um, really resonated with me. And that was the importance of, and particularly I think if you're studying music, the importance of being able to read braille music and not just maybe listening to something. I mean, it's great that so many of us, I suppose, have learned to play by ear, but not just listening to somebody else's interpretation of something. That's, that's exactly right. Um, and uh, I've played a lot of jazz and, and, and I have a good ear, um, but uh, having the Braille score is wonderful. And, you know, one of my heroes, as I'm sure you know, is Louis Braille himself. And uh, Louis Braille wanted us, wanted himself to have information. He was quite a musician. He played organ and cello. Um, and his, his code included music right from the start. And he understood the importance of literacy. In fact, when he got the code from Captain Barbier, Barbier uh, who had made the code, it was phonetic spelling of words. And immediately Braille said, no, blind people need to know how to spell words. So he made it a literal code with letters. Um, he had the same idea with music. We need to be in direct contact with the score information. So we get, we literally know the score. Whereas when we listen to other people play, um, you know, there's great value in that, especially in the jazz tradition. But um, if they're looking at music while they're playing, and if they're disregarding certain things like where to get louder, where to get softer, where the accents are and so forth, then we're not getting that information. It's not that it wasn't there, it's that they chose to ignore it or they didn't know what it meant. So what I wanted to do was make a system built on the genius of Louis Braille, which is Braille music. To this day, it remains uh, one of the most elegant and economical ways to show music to a blind reader. That being said, I wanted to add the tools of the new millennium, which, uh, you know, things like synthetic speech, uh, refreshable braille, and uh, MIDI technology, which is basically uh, uh, the way your computer can play music, um, and blend all those things. Because <clears throat> I do believe that braille music is the most elegant and quick way for me to learn something. But I also recognize that not everyone reads braille music, not everyone can, or not everyone wants to. So what we've done, and we'll demonstrate this a little bit later, we've, we've made something we call a talking score feature. So that you can learn the piece uh, by listening to the screen reader. Uh, you can do it in combination with refreshable braille or just with the speech. Um, if you're low vision, we have a way to magnify the music and scroll it in a special way to help you keep track of the music. So all of those mediums or blends of those media uh, uh, it is all about giving you the information directly, um, not having you uh, kind of be once removed from the score information. And so um, uh, I'm very proud of that. I'm very happy we've been able to do that. And when I say we, believe me, I. Uh, it's nice to be credited with doing these things. And I, and, I, and I did have an idea to start this, but my business partner, Albert Milani, uh, has been the main driver for the software. Uh, he took my little prototype and made a real product out of it. Um, and we've had so many people over the years 
uh, Dr. Lippold Hawken, who made Lyme, you'll see later. And our friend James from London, who's been, who took over Lyme, and he's been our Lyme developer. So lots of people on the team. I'm probably forgetting too many of them, and I apologize to them. But the point is that we've really tried to present something that gives blind people the maximum amount of independence to learn the music they want to perform, as well as to compose and arrange the music that's in their head so that they can get it into print and have sighted people play it. Okay, now just before we start the demo, maybe one other thing I'd like to just touch on briefly is you, you were for a long time supporting um, music producers, I suppose, people who wanted to mix their own music, uh, right. audio engineers, that, that kind of stuff. And I know some of that stuff has changed and the platforms uh, have changed a little on Windows. Where are we on all that at the moment? Okay, well, as, as you know, and many of our listeners probably remember, we, for almost 20 years, uh, were selling and supporting a solution called Cake Talking for Sonar for a product called Cakewalk Sonar. For a lot of business and technical reasons, uh, that solution is no longer available. Um, and a lot of people say, well, what, what's next? Um, and so people are using something called Reaper on Windows, and it has a free uh, access method called Osara. Um, there's another one on Windows called Samplitude uh, that's a, a pricier option, but um, there are some dedicated people, and I believe in the UK, who have written some scripts for it. Um, meantime, the, uh, the thing, the uh, audio production software on the Macintosh, on the Apple side of things, has really come a long way in the last two years. If you had called me two or three years ago, I would not have recommended that you try doing real work with your Mac and audio production, but it's really come a long, long way. Uh, uh, and one of the guys who made it happen is my buddy Chi Kim uh, from um, Berkeley College of Music. Um, he made something he calls Flow Tools that helps you use Pro Tools on the Mac. So we've really, um, we've really shifted to more of a consultation and training model for that as opposed to selling software uh, and only. Um, you know, we're, we're training people uh, remotely uh, to use those, those tools. Um, and it's nice that we have a, a choice. And all that being said, I will say that nothing comes close to what we had with Cake Talking. And David Pinto, who developed that, was a brilliant developer. And, um, you know, we, a lot of people around the world, uh, I, I get a lot of reflected glory from David's work, but David really was the guy behind Cake Talking. I, I was a consultant and helped him uh, and made sure he, he wrote a, a wonderful tutorial. But it's the most user-friendly thing I've ever seen. Unfortunately, it's just gone. And in this world, as you know, nothing lasts forever and we have to move on and all that, but darn it, it was great. Yeah, I, I saw some great things being done uh, with Cakewalk Sonar over the years. So, uh, but good to know there are other things going on and that you can still provide some help in that regard as well. Um, so Bill, we're gonna go into demos and look at some of what you have. Again, just to remind people, you can post in the chat, you can raise your hand and we'll go back to Carl every so often to see how things are going there. Please, if you just, there's an awful lot of people at this session, I know there's a lot of questions and we'll do our best to get through as much as we can in the time that we all have together. So if we don't get to your question, I do apologize in advance. Uh, Bill, happy to hand over to you for the demo. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, and I also will say that, you know, I hopefully uh, the demo will even resolve uh, and uh, address some of the questions that are in your mind at the moment. Uh, I'm sure Stuart would be happy to hear from you after the session. And you can also go to dancingdots.com. There's a contact form and I, I, I can read those. Uh, so we'll, we'll try to uh, answer what uh, questions you have. So, okay, let's just talk a bit about kind of what we, what we have in terms, today's session is going to focus on uh, our main thing these days, which is ex what I call accessible music notation software. Um, 
I did develop a, a prototype for Goodfield, which Albert helped me make into a product. And what Goodfield does is it takes digital print scores and it converts them into the equivalent Braille music automatically. It plays the role of the Braille music transcriber. Um, so you can, if, if you use a wonderful product called Duxbury Braille Translator, you can think of Goodfield as the musical Duxbury, if you like. Uh, Duxbury is a, a literary Braille translator, for those who may not know that. Um, and it does a great job with taking all kinds of text documents and automatically converting them to Braille. So we take music documents and turn them into Braille music. Um, the main way we do that is through uh, uh, a companion program called Lime. And if you can see the screen now, you see that I have a Lime document open. It's a score of Paco Bell's Canon. Um, and if you've been to a wedding lately, at least uh, in our country and probably around the world, uh, you've heard this played as the bride came down the aisle. And, uh, you know, if, if uh, Mr. Paco Bell had copyrighted this, he would never have had to write anything else in his whole life. But uh, I'm, sadly, I don't think he did. But um, anyway, so what we've done, as I said earlier, we've tried to build a multimedia environment so that you can appreciate the score uh, kind of on different channels simultaneously or separately. Um, so right now, we have the print music to this violin part on the screen. Um, we have the Braille on my Braille display. I'm going to hold that. Uh, and those of you who can see it, you'll see that there, there's Braille on it. And some of the Braille is blinking up and down. So I'm going to press the, the right arrow key. Um, B3, E5, F. So the second note uh, is an E half. Um, and I'm going to type a key to repeat that description. E5 half. E5 half. Now, I probably should switch over uh, since you're, we're based in the UK today. We can teach uh, our software to say the, um, the UK versions of that, which would be E minimum, uh, E5 minimum. Uh, so E is the pitch name, five is the octave number, and uh, half note or minimum is the uh, duration of that note. And so on my Braille display, I see the dots for that, which in Braille music is dots one, two, three, four. It's blinking up and down to indicate to me that when I type the letter Z here, or Z I should say today, E5, F. Uh, that's what it's talking about. Um, I'm going to move to the next note with the right arrow key. Bar two beat one, D5, F. Right, so it played the D, it said D5, half. D5, F. And so forth. So it's all integrated. We have the print, the braille, the speech, uh, and, the, uh, and the pitch. Uh, first note it. So we have the print notation for, for the notes, for the braille notation for the notes, we have the sound of the note, and we have the talking score de describing it. Treble clef, two sharps, D major, four, four time, quarter equals 66, F sharp five, F. Now that's what I get when I'm focused on the first note, because the first note has lots of information associated with it. Treble clef, two sharp. Tells me the clef, because remember, uh, we have the print score on the screen. In fact, Lime started out life as a program for sighted guys to get their music onto the printed page. Um, so we worked with Dr. Hawken uh, and uh, Albert and, um, and Leopold Hawken worked together so that we could integrate uh, the JAWS speech with it and the, um, the, braille, the braille display. Um, so anyway, uh, then another fun thing is we can hear it, we can hear the computer play it back in tempo here, he, here's. If I press Control H, it goes into the Hear dialog. And um, when you hear the music play, um, if you can see the screen, you'll see that there's a, a track, a tracking kind of a, a visual cue that's showing you where you are in the print. And on my Braille display, I can read as I'm listening. And when I run out of, when I come over to the right margin, it, it runs down to the next line. It, 
tracks the music. Simultaneously, the Braille and the print are tracking. So let's listen a bit. Uh, Enter. Okay. I'm going to speed the tempo up a bit. Here the braille display. And now we're about to play some quarter notes. And now it's going to change. Yep, the braille just refreshed. Be able to see how much you guys can see over this connection. Okay. So and the playback. Um, and it's an integrated system. Now I wanted to start with something relatively simple. Uh, so you can see that. Um, maybe, let's see, uh, just just out of interest, I'm going to see if I can switch to um, to show you uh, how a low vision person might see this. So let's see, I'm using a different keyboard today. Uh, Bill, just while you're doing that, this may or may not be significant for your demo, but we have found that magnification doesn't um, show over Zoom, so uh, the the if you're if you're showing something that's magnified, it may well likely not share. Uh, okay, well let's see. What Space. Which elbows can an excerpt violin lime lighter arrow key mode is on. Control. Okay, so I I put the lime lighter mode on. I'm going to go to bar go go, go, go to bar back to bar one one enter. Which elbows can an excerpt bar one beat. Uh, so I'll I'll keep the magnification to a minimum. Uh, but let's see if I can edit menu under control zoom 190.06 percent unavailable save zoom resizable frame width checked tiny big two huge three zoom four zoom five five zoom um, four four I'll take it to 4x but maybe Carl can tell us if it looks silly enter um, which elbows can an excerpt to violin dot limb calling page one of three no it's fine is it good okay yep. stand lime letter initiating automatic scrolling I'm going into automatic scrolling mode uh, the four arrow keys are uh, actually mapped to four switches on a pedal board that we supply with this product. But uh, I've hit the down arrow. Now I'm going to hit the right arrow, which, which is going to do um, what we call automatic scrolling mode. Uh, that was automatic scrolling. I'm going to briefly go into what we call manual scrolling mode. Lime music stand. Lime ladder initiating manual scrolling colon at bar 10. And of course, uh, I'm blind as, as, as you probably understand, but our, most of our typical uh, customers for this, this product we call Lime Lighter are certainly uh, uh, low vision, but they don't use speech typically. So you don't have to have speech. Uh, it, and it would probably distract a lot of people with low vision. Uh, so don't worry if you're saying, oh man, I can't listen to all that chatter. You don't have to, but I do have to. So uh, sorry about that. But here's the manual scrolling mode. Um, so you basically, well, let's go back to the beginning. Bar one beat one, treble clef. So you'd pick up your violin or whatever you play. Um, it says Lime music stand. Lime lighter initiating manual. Manual scrolling and you'd play you'd hit the pedal. And then the next measure, that current measure kind of slides away to the left. The next measure comes into view. Yeah. So you're in control of when you switch to the next measure. And I don't know if you can get this on the broadcast. But basically, the way it works is the music's tracking to your eye. Each time you press the pedal to move to the next measure, the music slides to you. So you're never in a position where you have to read from the left margin to the right margin and then shift your gaze very quickly back to find the next line of music. It all kind of comes to you. Um, 
So that's a real quick overview of R16 beat one. I'm lighter. Um, by the way, all of these things you can you can contact Sight and Sound uh, and Stuart and and, and colleagues. Uh, you can get an evaluation copy of this to try for no cost for a 15 day period, which is extendable if you on request. Um, and you can just see if any of this stuff helps you. Okay, so I'm going to go back to uh, kind of lime allowed mode here. And Lee, switching off lime ladder arrow key mode. Continue button. Pulch elbows can connect. Okay, and I'm gonna. Uh, well, let's see how we're doing on time. Maybe, maybe I'll uh, open something a little more uh, uh, complicated. Can I just, Bill, while you're doing that, uh, any hands, Carl, or anything we need to refer to from our audience? Nothing. I, I think they're all um, just, oh, hang on, as soon as you say that. <laughs> Sorry. Colin. Um, well, I've got one from Chris Brady. Okay. Oh, we've just got a question quickly just come in um, to the chat box from Monique. It says, can you explain what you mean by pedal? Is it an actual pedal that you attach to your device? Thank you for that question. You prompted me because I meant to show it to you, um, and I'll describe it as I show it. Once I find it, it was on my desk before we started, and it seems to have walked away. Alert exclaim. The host has spotlighted your video for every one period. Uh, actual pedal board, it has four pedals kind of um, on a on a board you put it on the floor and it's wireless and we we put uh stickers on it to to um different color stickers uh to make it nice and bright for people with low vision because sometimes if you put it on the floor it's dark material and it's a dark carpet or a dark tile or whatever it just disappears um i think i have one here somewhere Sorry about that. Um, yeah, here. I got one under the desk here. Uh, this is live, guys. This is what it is. Alert exclaim. The host has spotlighted your video for every one period. Okay. Here they are. Can you see that, Carl? Just lift it up just a smidge. That's yeah. it. Perfect. Okay. So you can see there are four switches. They each have brightly colored stickers to help you um, and you just basically put it down on the floor and press on it and it it does all the there are four switches and there are four arrow keys and so you kind of map them to the arrow keys when I demonstrate it obviously the uh, arrow keys are a lot easier for me um, but yeah so with the wireless pedal board and a machine that Dell makes and I'm using today um, which is runs for uh, three or four hours on an internal battery, and it has a touch screen because we do have touch gestures in the software. Um, you have a totally wireless system, and you can put this uh, Dell machine. It's very thin and regular uh, form factor. You can put it on a music stand, and uh, you do want to secure it with something like Velcro or um, a strap or something, but. You can put it right there on the music desk, as I should say. I can remember my UK language, um, and and it, it's very you know it's it's very good. It's it's only about six pounds. It has a diagonal uh, screen width of seventeen point three inches, which I believe is about forty three centimeters. And um, yeah, so a lot of people use it uh, in the practice room to memorize their music, or some people do take it onto the stage with them during concerts. And, um, and use the system. Alert exclaim. So um, actually, if, if you like, I would, I, I have one minute, I have one minute video I'd like to show to you, if that's all right. Uh, Windows D. Let's see. Items view multi-select list box, pulch elbows can connect D. Folder view list view, Dropbox chat D. Downloads D. Dancing dots lime lighter one minute video. Okay, so this does need a little video, uh, descriptive video services. I'll, but I'll basically set it up. You're seeing, uh, you're seeing uh, a young woman who is 
using line letters. She's playing guitar. She's playing piano. And there's a, there's a voiceover. So let's just give you a taste of this. Okay. Enter. Movies and TV. We're not. Movies, TV. We're... Pop up. Discover an accessible music technology for the visually impaired. We can read, create, practice, and perform. The Lime Lighter allows you to set your preferred zoom level, then choose from a variety of background and note color options. It also includes a wireless pedal board, magnifying music tracks to your eye, so there's no need to find the next line or even turn the page. You can scan, import music XML, or directly enter scores into the Lime Editor software. You can listen through your piece at any tempo, or turn on the automatic scrolling option to play along to a metronome click. The touch features allow you to make notes in your music and navigate quickly to any measure. After the work is done, it's time to perform with confidence because you know the score. Dancing Dots, where music meets technology for the blind and low vision performers. There you go. To participate. Alert. So, Alt F4. Zoom. Um, yeah, that was the video summary, and it reminded me to mention uh, what I've been showing you is uh, an overview of the access methods. But, you know, the question becomes that's all good, but how do I learn the music I want to play? And so there are three ways um, you can create music in line because it is a, an editor for music. It, you can think of Lime as kind of the Microsoft word for music notation. Instead of entering characters, you enter notes and so forth. Um, the second way is you can scan with another part, another component of the Goodfield suite and the Lime Lighter suite, which we call SharpEye. SharpEye is a wonderful scanning program for music. And the third way is and I think the most exciting thing to happen to, to blind musicians probably since Braille Music is something called Music XML. And Music XML is a mainstream interchange format for scores. So if your friend has, say, Sibelius and you have Finale and you want to exchange scores, it used to be that you had to sit down and type in a lot of information uh, to make what you have agree with what your friend had. Now with Music XML, you can export to that format from your program, your notation program, give it to your friend, import, and you're done. So Lime can import Music XML. And um, actually, maybe I could demonstrate that quickly. Bill, we might just, because uh, I think there's one or two people with questions uh, waiting. So right. I don't know, Carl, do you want to bring someone in? Yeah, we've got Chris Brady, who is the only one that's got his hands up, but we can go to those um, email questions as well. Yeah. Uh, so, Chris, do you want to, will we just bring Chris in for a quick question? Uh, Chris is a, a regular webinar Wednesday attendee. And then we have a couple of quick queries to come in via email. Great. Thank, so thanks so much, yours, Chris. Yeah, thanks very much indeed. Um, now, um, Braille Music, um, I, I, a couple of a couple of years ago, I got a couple of bra books in Braille music to try and learn it. But mm -hmm. uh, I got a book that it was, it was actually explaining some of the changes they, they've made to Braille music from one old um, copy to, to, to a newer uh, adapted copy. Um, it's like UEB Braille music or instead of literary Braille music, if you like. Um, now, your software, does it actually show the Braille music in... The, the newer Braille music or older Braille music or what? We based it on um, a manual of Braille music that came out in 1997. Uh, the international, it was called the New International Braille Music Manual that Betty Krolik, um, uh, my late friend Betty Krolik uh, organized with I think 14 or 18 countries. Um, so we started with that. Um, we do have some options uh, in, in our software to produce, if you like, different flavors um, 
because what Betty got people to do was agree on the signs. She did not get them to totally agree on the format or the page layouts. So there's certain things in the UK, for example, that uh, lay out differently. Typically, the UK uh, people want to know more about the print score. For example, they want to know what what system a particular bar was on. Alert! Two participants um, raised hand. But, Alert! Two. Uh, or, or they might like to know, um, oh, I don't know, when a new system begins. Whereas in in North America and most other places. The Braille score, you just kind of fit as much you can on one line and go to the next line when you run out of space. But the basic Braille music system uh, is, is with that standard from 1997. There have been some, as you probably know, a number of standards uh, over the years. And um, Betty's work was to unify at least the symbols we use and not necessarily when or if we use them. For example, clef signs in the UK, everybody wants to see the clef sign. They want to know in the print music, was that in treble clef or bass clef? Typically over here, we don't show that. We just show you what notes to play. Um, yeah, because yeah. I, I, I know um, when I taught myself to read ordinary music, um, like for example, at the beginning of, the, uh, uh, of a tune, if it was in a certain key uh, and the print music, there would be um, things on lines which would show you how many flats there were and what they, what was flat and what was sharp. And now in Braille music, I, I, I don't know how they would actually, uh, I don't know how they would actually uh, show that in Braille music. And that's one of the things that uh, would I be able to find out if I use this software. Uh, yes, well, we, we would show you uh, the Braille music. Um, in fact, why don't I do this? Alert. Three I'm participants going to raised hand. Alert. Three participants do something raised I hand. forgot to show you guys. Uh, when I have the score in line and I'm happy Alert. with Four the way it looks and I want to make a hard copy Braille score, yeah. launch I can launch, launch Goodfield Dr. from Lime. I can be, Lime says, here, Goodfield. There's an entry under the file menu in line called launch good field. Launch good field dot dot enter to navigate. Press left or right arrow. Pull trouble scan and excerpt to violate. When uh, Lime says, okay, good field, here is a Lime score for you to transcribe automatically. Um, and hang on, it should take a second here, but it should come up. Warning, call in no double so, R at end. Good field has a couple things. Hey, there's no double. Right. List box. So List box. I'm going to hit the button. Alt P. Real destination enter. And here we are. It opens up what we call uh, the Braille viewer. And what? your question prompted me. Now you see, if you can see the screen, um, the Braille music page, the way it would be if we send it to a Braille printer, Braille embosser. So it says Canon in D page one. Mm -hmm. uh, Comment, I'm okay. arrowing down to the top of bell. Blank. Uh, desktop. Wait a minute. I've bounced onto the desktop. BRL view. To move to an item, press the arrow keys. Lime G F E E 4 million 98. Okay, violin, violin is centered. Blank. Now, what I'm coming to your question. Centered above the Braille. Question mark. It says Seven. quarter note equals 66, two sharps. Four, four. So there's your key signature. In Braille music, it's shown at the beginning. Uh, alert. Five participants. Alert. Alerting Five. Me dropping. Braille uh, but it's, right. It says it says two sharps. Um, two sharps. Does it actually show you what those sharps are? No. That is the, the the difference. That's a key difference between Braille and print. In general, we as blind musicians have to know a lot more music theory than our sighted friends. So, as you mentioned, in the sighted, in the uh, print score, those two sharps are written on their respective lines, lines or spaces. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. So, for I think the F would be every every good boy does fine. So it's the top line. You, you yeah. See the top symbol in the margin. 
And then in the key of D, you have also the C's are sharp. So what would that be? The third space, you would write a, a, a sharp symbol. FAC, that's right, yes. FAC going down, uh, going, uh, going up, I think. That's right. So the, the thing is, um, you get the information, you're supposed to be in the key of D, but you as a blind musician have to know that in the key of D, the F's and the C's are sharp. Um, you get a little more hand holding in the print because it literally shows you the line or space for that note when you come to an F, make it sharp. Um, and then the other difference is that each time you begin a new line or system, as you might say in yeah. print, you see that again marked each time you start. So if you start halfway down the page, you don't have to look back to the beginning to say, oh, I'm supposed to be in two sharps. In Braille, you do. In Braille, it's kind of what we might call running status. You have two sharps until further notice, play this in two sharps. So, right. you know, 80 measures later, if we go to three sharps, we're going to show you that. But yeah. meantime, you need to remember. So, yeah, so that's, that's, that is a very good observation that there's a, there's a difference between the Braille and print. Uh, but we do information alert from Nicola Dixon to all panelists. C H R. Um, sorry, I should probably tell you. Uh, and also, alert. and also, for example, if if you've got, because when I actually taught myself to uh, read um, print music, I uh, was uh, uh, began to study the organ, and uh, when you're actually looking at chords, for example. Um, in print music, the chords are okay because every note is written out on its respective uh, line or space. So you, you, you've, you've got that. Now, in Braille music, um, it's slightly different. Yes, in Braille music, what I like, the way I, I, I like to think of it is, Braille music reads left to right like a line of text. Yes. Uh, music reads left to right, but it also reads up and down. So in Braille music, uh, for each part, there's a line, just like you would have a line of words. And you start at the left and you go across. So, okay, that's fine for something like Papa Bell's Canon. You have one note at a time, very nice. But as you say, if, if you're playing chords, um, how do you indicate that? And um, without getting too far into the weeds, I'll just say that in Braille music, you show the fundamental note and then you show a sign that says okay while you're playing that note let's say it's let's say it's a c major chord while you're yeah. playing that g in your right hand mm -hmm. play a note a third below it uh, and there's a symbol that says third and then while you're playing that play a note that's a fifth below it alert from mingway so those are called panelists is the software only and compatible? they're very handy um yeah. but they do take a little time, but again, we have to know a lot more theory. In oh, print, about, they're, they're stacked up them. vertically, and you just see the, as you say, you see the notes, yeah. and it's very clear. Guys, I'm going to, uh, Chris, I'm sorry, we just have lots of questions coming in, so okay. I have to I have to move on from that. Apologies. Um, but no, 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 no it's problem. A, it's a, thanks it's for a your good question. Good good question. Thanks for my question, anyway. Yeah, yeah, thanks for your thank observations. You. Uh, we have questions coming on the chat. Carl, I don't know if you want to. Yeah, uh, I'll do the first one. Yeah. Um, so I haven't. Oh, hang on. Nicola Dixon. Nicola, yeah. Down to four. Real oh. oh, I don't know whether that's actually a question. It's just a just a response. Um, when you do ask questions, guys, what you do need to do is send it to all um, panelists and attendees. Otherwise, it's only the three panelists that actually get to see the questions. Um, I've got one from Kate Risden. Um, there is a need to know your music theory for anyone wanting help with this and braille music knowledge. I can help with lessons. Uh, I work as a professional musician and a teacher of both VI and sighted. I perform with the Bournemouth symphony orchestra. Okay. So that was more of a help thing. Maybe should have read that properly first. Um, and that's great. And um, we had one from, I think it's Ming who Ming, uh, Ming, Ming Hui. Yeah. Um, is the software only compatible with JAWS? Um, until this last version that yes the answer was yes now there's a qualified answer uh, the speech component will work 
and Chris Brady has lowered or narrator or other screen readers. But if you want to see the refreshable Braille, the interactive Braille that I was using while I'm looking, going, you know, while I'm in Lime, you still need JAWS. We have not added support for Braille, interactive Braille. That's not to say that you can't see the Braille music on your Braille display when you launch Goodfield the way I just did. When I was in the Braille view, you can certainly see it even if you use a different screen reader, reader than JAWS. But if you want to see the Braille changing, as you saw, you know, on my display while I was working in uh, in Lime. Alert from Sally Ward to a is, and Could you give the name key. again of the teacher of Braille music, please? So yeah, that's the quick answer to that. Okay, and someone's asking for the name of the teacher of Braille music. That's a lady called Kate Risden, and she's on this uh, this session at the moment. Um, Searching basic that, Braille. She came in from Sally. Braille uh, I, I think we had, basic have we any hands raised, Carl? Yeah, we've got four. I'm going to go to Olga to start with, Olga Petrovich. Um, you may have to unmute yourself, Olga, because I don't know if I have... That's it. You're there now. Hey, guys. Hello. Uh, and regards from Serbia. Um, happy to be here. Um, so I have a question. Uh, so I'm a harpsichordist myself, finishing the master's degree at the uh, new university Mozartium in Salzburg in Austria. I'm also a pianist, professional musician. Anyhow, so as I'm a harpsichordist, I would like to know, Bill, uh, have you had any experiences with transcribing the like manuscripts, the original, original Baroque music into Braille? Um, I'm not sure. Well, let me say this. You can scan music with the SharpEye software, and if it's conventional Western music, uh, it should work pretty well, although some things scan better than others. So I'm not sure I know about the notation you're mentioning, and it sounds like it might be it's a specific notation which was used in like a like original scores from Baroque. Maybe can I be so free and send you maybe the email and ask you privately <laughs> as well? Please. I can say that um, my friend John Henry, who taught uh, harpsichord, yeah, he's also a harpsichordist. Yeah, for many years has has used good feel and mm -hmm. and benefited from it. Um, but I think his his uh, assistant who makes the line files she probably if, if if the source is in that in that system i suspect that someone would have to manually enter it but i don't manually enter it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay thank you very much you're welcome thank you um right that's brilliant next one we're going to go to is alexandru you should be able to that's Alexandra from Scotland, I think. Hi, I'm Alex from uh, Romania. Oh, apologies. Yeah, don't worry, that's fine. Um, very quickly, I'd like to touch a little bit more on uh, key signatures. Um, what about mixed key signatures? I mean, if you have, let's say, F sharp, B flat and E flat, what about those can Lime support them, or uh, it, is it better to write them uh, as accidentals and just kissing? Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Uh, well, um, the answer is Lime can do it. Uh, Goodfield cannot do it. Um, and for those who may not know about this music theory. There are standard key signatures, and what Alex is talking about is, is, is kind of non-standard uh, key signatures. But um, you know, they're not so non-standard that you'll never see them in your whole life. But you probably won't see them if you're kind of just playing for fun. Um, so that's the, uh, the short answer. Is I think you could print out those in line, but you. Uh, if you want to show it in Braille, yeah, my recommendation would be to have no key signature and simply use the accidental, uh, where there's an E flat, put a flat before the E and that kind of thing. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Alexander. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to go to Carol Adams. Hi, Carol. 
Uh, I said Carol. Trump has lowered hand. Participants raised the hand. I think you might need to unmute yourself. I think I think she already is. Oh. Carol, can you hear us? No. Getting a lot from not that. working. Not Carol, working. if you is can't that... get the oh, we we have you now. We have. Hang you. on, I just muted her just as she spoke. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Hi, Carol. Oh, I think she's muted herself. I think we're having a bit of a two and a throw in. We we did have Carol for a sec. Maybe, uh, Alt A. My... There we go. Hi, Carol. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. we can hear you now. Oh. Yeah. All oh, right, I don't know what happened there. Um, basically, I just wanted to know if there's any software, if you don't read Braille music and you've never been taught, um, I, I've got like poems that I want to put into music and I can sort of do it by playing the note on the piano, but I can't write it down. So right. does that make any sense? Or <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, yeah, well, thank you for that question because it reminds me I should show you the input method in so file menu. I'm going to go to, to move through items. File menu. Down arrow. N. Go to new. To navigate. Press left or period. New piece dialog. And I can create a new piece. I'll just take all the uh, default values for my new piece. Colon new piece. Colon and I'm creating a parent. I have a, a a musical keyboard here uh, on my desk. I'm going to gingerly pick it up. It's only two octaves and try to show it to you without unplugging it. Uh, so there it is. Carl, can you see it? Yeah, we got it. Okay. Black and white keys, the usual thing. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, you can enter notes uh, into your new piece from the PC keyboard. I can note go into mode. note entry oh. mode. Again, it sh I can make Order. it say crotchet if I like it. I didn't switch to that. But um, I'll put in a couple crotchets here. No entry still have a B3. violin B4. sound left over. Um, but I can also press Control R, R and it's going to put me in what's called record mode. Record dialog. Re record by playing on MIDI keyboard. Adjust settings and play your notes colon. So Metronome colon. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now that music new piece, I just star played page one is one. in print on the screen, and it's in Braille on my Braille display, and we can play it back with that same here dialog I showed earlier. Control H for here. So let's play it back. Here key here specified. Enter. Yeah, there it is. So. And you can go back and you can do things like, uh, well, let's put an accent on G4, quarter. Um, accent. B3, B4, quarter rest. Bar 2, beat, beach 2, B3, beat 4, quarter. Bar 3, beat 1, beach 2. And let's put a staccato. Beach 2, B4, staccato. Um, and so forth. You can put in title, the lyrics. Uh, it's a very... Um, Fully developed three partition editor. Alert. And, three partition. and the fun thing is when you're done, you can just press control P, print it out on your print ink printer, give it to your friend, okay. sighted friend, and say, here's my piece, and go home and practice. So um, yeah, so to answer your question, if you don't know Braille music, you can still do this. And if you don't know that much music theory, the only thing I'll say is you have to be from Ming Wei. fairly precise in how you play, rhythmically precise. Um, if you get a little ahead or behind the beat, what you thought was, what you wanted to be a quarter note might be something like a, you know, a sixteenth tied to it. Um, yeah. So, and again, some a lot of people have learned a lot of music using just the talking score feature. 
uh, again, my, my favorite is Braille music, but you know, it's, it's easy when you know how, and I know how, but not everybody. Yeah. Uh, so um, you, we have some uh, friends from Argentina who uh, last I heard were. Alert, five participants uh, raised Fabian and Alert. Paula play piano and they lost their sight very gradually. So they never learned braille. Uh, they lost their sight in their teens. They never learned braille music. And so they use Lime Aloud and they use it to play some very sophisticated pieces. If you go to, um, if you go to our site and click on presentations, I think you'll see Fabiana and her sister. There's a nice video of them playing lots of standard literature or piano forehand like Ravel and Beethoven and Mozart and all that good stuff. And then so, the thing is, I don't actually have Windows either. Um, I only have Apple. Right. So for people like you, if, if the, the, only, the only thing to do right now, I hope this can change someday, but it's going to take a lot of time and money um, uh, for us to make a version that runs on, on the Mac desktop. So some, some of our customers have Windows installed on their Mac. And yeah. They yeah. Install Six our participants raised hand. Uh, using something like Six participants raised hand. There's another one called, uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, VR. So, oh, gosh, I forgot. Um, VMware, is it? VMware, thank you. That's it. VMware, I've heard of that. V VM, yeah, virtual machine. Yeah. Yeah. I've never tried it that way, but I have done the boot camp way, but. I don't know. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, Carl, thanks for your question. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, Thank Because we have a, a good few hands raised still, so we'll try and get through as many as we can. Again, if you want, or if you can just remind your people can type in the chat window if you wish as well, and we'll get to your chats uh, as we go along. Carl, how are we doing? I'm just going to go to, um, we've just got a question quickly for Ming Wei. Uh, can Lime and Lime allowed work as a standalone without sharp eye or good feel yes that was easy we just do sell a package called lime allowed that is basically everything you're seeing except good feel and some people don't want the sharp eye and we can, we can work that out with you if you don't want sharp eye but you probably Alert. sooner or later are going to have to scan some Alert. music five participants Alert. I, 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 should probably, I should Alert. probably show you a bit of sharp eye before we go, but um, you guys tell me what you which what, what you want to do. Yeah, we might just get through one or two more of the hands, and then we'll see. Can we? Because okay, a few people. Well, I'm just gonna better. just gonna go to David Stevenson. Hi there, David. You should be able to unmute yourself now. Could you hear me now? We have yep, you. David. How are you doing? Okay. Can it can it the system be used, Bill, um, to to connect a uh, key keyboard and and do multi tracking with it? Because one of the one of the things I found that one of the, I've got um, keyboards both Yamaha and um, Techniques, but the difficulty is re reading the registrations on them and things. So can it be used in that effect? And can you listen to the music as well? While playing, while pl so 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 you could put the accompaniment down and then play the tune afterwards as well. I understand. Yes. Um, well, there's kind of a yes and no part to your to your answer. Yes, you can use it with a keyboard um, that has its own sounds, like your Yamaha. Pardon me. Um, the Yamaha. Uh, I have a Yamaha upstairs in our studio that has some very nice sounds. Um, but Lime can only address what's called general MIDI bank. Alert. So From the now begin. 128 sounds in every MIDI instrument. There's something called general MIDI. Um, but it can't address any other banks. It's, it's, Lime is primarily, although it has a sequencer function you just saw, where I can play in and into that click, um, it's primarily a program to get music onto the printed page and then with good feel onto the braille page. Um, so when you think about multi-tracks, Lime would talk about multiple parts. And let's say you have, you want something for a duet between a flute and a violin. So you can go and play the violin part the way I did. And when you go back to add the flute part though, you're not going to hear the violin part 
that you already added. And I believe that was your question. I know I've used programs like Sonar and other programs like GarageBand and Logic where you can hear what you've already done. And that allows you to be a bit more creative. But in Lime, it's very much about just getting it out of your head and maybe having your, your plan in advance a lot more uh, solid as far as what you want and hearing it kind of in your head instead of through your ears as far as how the say the flute part meshes with the violin part. I hope that answers your question. Yes, that does answer the question. Thanks very much. Well, you're welcome. Cheers, Thank David. Um, we're just going to go to Sally Ward, I believe. Oh, oh hang on. Hi, Sally. I oh, know that was um, that was Donald just going. Thanks, Bill and Stuart, for thought-provoking webinar. I look forward oh, to learning more. Thanks, Donald. Regular regular attendee. Um, Geordie as well. Nice to hear you, Bill and Stuart. Wondering about the format in a vocal music. Will this be updated in good feel in terms of breaking lines at punctuation rather than bar lines? So, Jordi in Melbourne, it's great to have such an international attendance. Great That's to hear, right, Jordi. Yes. Hi, so, Jordi. Yeah. yeah. Hi, uh, Jordi. Uh, well, Jordi, I know this has been near and dear to your heart and a lot of others uh, as far as formatting the, the vocal line in uh, Goodfield. And I, I can only say we'd love to do it, but it's a very big project. And right now we're doing, we're doing some. Some things like adding some signs and alert. David Stevenson has lower hand. But the big projects where we're waiting for some funding, we're trying to see if we can get some funding to to do the bigger things like we know we need improvement on figured bass symbols, for example, or for short form chords. And alert. making the vocal line follow more of the natural alert. David Stevenson rather than simply fitting as much as you can Alert. based on how much music you can is Alert. Uh, David Steven what Jory's asking. So Alert. Uh, anyway, uh, I wish I had better news on that, but um, we're hoping to, and if anybody's listening who has a pile of money and wants to uh, to call me, uh, uh, just website, uh, I'm, I'm half kidding, but seriously, we, um, we are talking to some potential backers, uh, but nothing definite yet. Okay, so it's a good, hopefully something will come from that over time. And thanks, Jordi, and great that you've joined us at middle of the night for you. So we really appreciate yeah, gosh, that. What a night um, out. One in the morning true or something. Musician. Yeah, true musician. Yeah, true musician, right? Yeah, we're responsible for keeping Jordi awake all night. Uh, will we just see if there are other hands there, Carl? Yeah, there's a couple more hands. We've got Sally, Sally Ward. Um, you just have to unmute yourself, Sally. Oh, God, I've just done it again. There you go. <laughs> Can you hear me? We yeah. have you, Sally. Yep. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, you probably explained this at the beginning. I missed the first few minutes. But what refreshable Braille display are you using with this? Is this compatible with the Braille Note Touch? Yes. Uh, you can use, the, if you put your Braille Note Touch into terminal mode, uh, you can use it with our stuff. Um, the short answer is, I guess, if, if JAWS supports the Braille display, uh, we do as well. Right, okay. Thank you. Thanks. Sure. All right, thank you, Sally. You're welcome. Right, we'll just move on quickly to the next one. Tina, Tina Arbery, you're free to talk, Tina. You just need to unmute yourself, please. Um, firstly, yeah. I'd like to learn Braille music and and I've got a keyboard, a Genos um, Yamaha, it's done Genos, and it's got some speech on it. Call and press insert the space button, then left. Yeah, We're going to use that better. And I'd also like to speech try on and, um, put a song that I composed into Braille music and see if it's all right. been done. All right. Well, um, for learning Braille music, uh, these questions are great, guys. Thank you, because you're... I'm sorry, I've got another quick one. And do you oh, have hold 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 the, hold the thought? I want to show you something. Here's Carl. Can you see this? Yeah. Who's afraid of braille music? Yeah. yeah. We, we I wrote a little see anything. Talk. I'm visually impaired, so I can't see anything. Well, neither can I, love. But um, <laughs> but I wanted to show <laughs> I wanted to show it to everybody who can see it. We make a book called Who's Afraid of Braille Music, and this is the print version. But we have a braille version. Um, and so that's a 
a book we wrote to kind of explain the basics of braille music, but more so why there is braille music, how it's different from print, and why it's why if you can read literary braille and you have no physical, uh, you know, impediment to, to reading braille, that you really w ought to consider learning braille music if you can, because it's, it's a great system. Um, but I'm sorry, you had a second question. Yeah, do I need to get any, what particular software would I need? Because I've got JAWS and I've got an Orbit Reader 20, which, I can, which I'll be able to connect to my computer. Yes. So, um, so I'd need um, a lot of help because I, I don't know much about it, but I love my music. Sure. Well, um, you, can, you can use our software. Uh, we sell it in what we call software suites. So the one I've been showing the most is Goodfeel combined with a program called Lime. Um, so you probably want to get Goodfeel if you want the Braille music component. For people who don't want the Braille music component, you get a suite called Lime Aloud. And for people who need magnification and don't need Braille or speech necessarily, you can get something called Lime Lighter. So, um, and you can certainly contact Stuart and, and colleagues about those details. But um, I like to write little tunes and things. And I've used Lime to, to produce both print and Braille versions of songs. Um, that I, I give the print to, to people in my family and friends or professional musicians, and I can give the Braille to anybody who reads Braille music. And uh, one quick story, a few years ago, um, for a few summers, I was running a, a music camp out in California um, at a, a wonderful place called Enchanted Hills Camp. And um, I wrote a song that you can, you can uh, uh, well, you can, Let's see, I don't know if it's on our site, but I wrote a song about uh, a blind guy dreaming about his first ride, his fir first solo ride in his self-driving uh, vehicle, and I called it the Ballad of the Google Car. It, it was intended to be funny, but also to make people think about this whole thing, because personally, even if I had a Google Car, I'm not sure I'm ready to just get in it and take off down the road by myself. But um, so the song was intended to kind of get laughs. And what was fun, at the camp, we had people like me who read Braille music. We had people who needed magnification. And we had some volunteers who were 2020. And I was able to produce the Braille score, the magnified print score, and the regular print score from the same line file. I gave it to everyone in the chorus. My daughter was playing piano. She's 2020. I gave her the piano part in print. And we made the performance and we got some laughs, which was good too. But it was really a wonderful experience because it kind of brought together what I've been trying to do, which is integrate um, the print, the braille, and in between, give everybody what they need and kind of get past this idea like, well, I'm blind, I don't read that print stuff, and now we're stuck. So um, yeah, so I'd encourage you, uh, if you, if you like to get there's a free evaluation version of the software. You can get it and try using it. Um, uh, what I try to do is make a time to connect with you for maybe 30 minutes and just give you a, a little walkthrough of the basic operations, show you what, what manuals to read, and kind of turn you loose and, and, and see if it's something that could be helpful. Yeah, I've got a couple. I've got a book by Focus, which has got Braille in it. I've got it. Um... I don't know, it was two or three years ago, something like that anyway. Listen, Tina, if you get in touch with us, as um, as Bill said, and we can talk to you if you want to get a trial of the software you anyway. Email so. address, please. Sorry? Can you tell me the email address, the information I need to get in touch, please? Uh, sales at sightandsound.co.uk. Just send an email in there or give us a call and we'll be able to get in touch. We'll be able okay. to help you. about the Dancing Dots email, um, the one that he gave earlier? Oh, if you go to dancingdots.com, uh, there's a contact email form there, and you, uh, I, I can read those as well. Yeah, you can fill in your details. We're going to go on, much. Tina. Okay, no problem. Thank Thanks you. a million. Stuart, uh, can I just uh, quickly, uh, on the idea of books, if you get the Who's Afraid of Braille Music, that's kind of an overview. But there's another series we publish. I'm holding up a book 
uh, called an, an Introduction to Music for the Blind Student. That's a whole course in Braille music reading by Richard Teich. Um, so if you, if you want, that one has lots of the you know, assignments and chapters and details and examples. And there's another one that Richard wrote. This is his part three. This is for teachers who want to learn to teach Braille music, uh, sighted teachers, really. Um, you know, the Braille, the, Bra the blind teachers like me, we, we just use his other books. Um, but anyway, uh, while we're on the subject of books, I wanted to, to get that in there. Right, we do Wait. just have, do you want to just do these last two hands? Let's do the last two hands and then we can. Right. We've got Sally Ward. Sally. No, I asked mine. Thank you. Okay, Go sorry. On. Okay. I'll, I'll remove you in the politest possible fashion. Um, we have Louis, Louis, Louis Morales. You can unmute yourself. It sounds like a singer. Lewis, Louis, I don't know how to say it. One of the two. Lewis Morales. It's Louis. Like a... it's Louis. Um, Louis. Okay. Yep. Louis, do you want to unmute yourself and we can hear you, hopefully? Maybe. Alt A. Mike. There we go. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Louis. How are you? I'm pretty good. Bill, I'm here. So, hey, brother. Like how are you doing? Hopefully you remember me. <laughs> um, of course, of course. As soon as you have your your score in Lime, if you want to print it up in Braille, how can I do that process? So to to convert in a Braille format to be printed up in a Braille in a uh, um, in a Braille machine. So I don't know if you if you got my question. <laughs> no, I got you. I understand. Um, well, um, ah, sorry, sorry. Uh, also, um, I can see a little bit, and I seen your your line score, uh, mm -hmm. your line window, black yeah. and white. How can I do that? So how can I put a background black and the uh, the 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 score white so uh, is that possible yeah in lime you can invert the video uh you can go to it's under um the edit menu you see preferences and then you see general preferences and mm -hmm. there's something that says music window appearance and one of the buttons is white on black so you should be able to do that with the lime that you have the thing that uh, you do to get the Braille is you launch uh -huh. Video. You launch uh -huh. Video from Lime's file menu, but you must uh -huh. have license for Good Feel. I, I think you only have the Lime allowed. I don't think you have the Good Feel component. Yeah, yeah. I just have the the Lime allowed, but I yeah. think uh, in try to get the the Good Feel too. Yeah, you might upgrade to that if that's something you could use. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Hey, you're welcome. Good to hear hear your voice, and thanks for uh, zooming in from the Dominican Republic. Yeah, thank you for sending the email with the information. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you, Luis. It's great to have such an international attendance. Or it's fantastic. Okay, brilliant. Um, Bill, I, I, you know, I, I suppose the the um, the, the other query, and I know you, you mentioned it a few times, was accessing music, and you mentioned scanning printed music and sharp eye. Um, and of course, that's another way of people getting access, especially maybe to music that mightn't be available in um, a digital form to, to them at the, mo at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, in fact, um, you can use a flatbed scanner and scan the music. I'm going to say this, and uh, sometimes I feel like I'm a broken record about scanning, but if you've heard me speak before, you've probably heard this one, but uh, the wonderful thing about scanning music is when it works, it's so great, but it doesn't always work because scanning anything, you're going to encounter errors. When we scan text, uh, sometimes from the context, we can say, oh, well, 
it was supposed to say good morning Stuart it said uh, it said uh, good uh, warning or whatever oh I guess I'll I can change that but if you're scanning a piece of music and you don't know the music and it makes an error you really can't guess and the way you can clean up the uh, music in sharp eye is you really need to be able to look at the original score and see oh that's actually a half note uh, whatever well of course if we could do that we wouldn't be going to this trouble so uh, bottom line is it's not a reasonable expectation for a blind person to totally independently use scanning uh, without some kind of help from a sighted assistant. Um, and I say that as a, a fairly independent blind person. Uh, it's, this is no slur against you as uh, your level of independence, but the bottom line is we can't see. So uh, that being said, I'm going to close line and I'm going to first scan an image of a page that's pretty simple that should scan with zero or very few errors. And then I'm going to scan something that I know has a few significant errors and kind of show you the difference. Um, let's see here. You might need to start your sharing again. Oh, did I unshare? Bill? No, I did it because, um, of the oh. your jaws kept responding to everything I was typing in or <laughs> every, every when I was doing it. No, that's fine. Yeah, I finally put jaws on demand. I was catching on to that slowly. Um, yeah, let's see if I can share. Um, Just while we're doing that, um, to say to people that uh, next week's webinar Wednesday, we are planning a special around entertainment and audio description and reading books and all that kind of stuff. So more information will be available through our social media channels and uh, newsletters, etc. So if you're interested in anything entertainment wise, uh, that'll be next Wednesday on our webinar Wednesday special. Sounds good. Sounds good. Now let's see, did I get share back? Chat seven. Yep. Yep. Um, and and do you have my audio still? Escape. Yep. yep. Okay, cool. All right. So let's go. Windows D. Leaving menus. Folder view. H. Sharp Eye to enter. Okay. So Sharp Eye is a music OCR program. Um, a lot of people say, well, I have Sharp Eye. Uh, Kurzweil or I have Open Book. Can I use it with that? And uh, the answer is no, because those programs are designed to ignore anything that's not text. Sharp is kind of the opposite. It tries to ignore anything that's not music, but it will pick up lyrics and things uh, if you set, if you make a setting for that. PC car's title is Sharp I2. Now I'm gonna press Control, Control I to open images. Um, these are images opened by scanning actual hard copy. Um, but, uh, items alert exclude so let's see i'm going to go to um i'm going to go to my desktop l file name c colon backslash users enter items view uh, slower speech on Default. apologies to people who listen quick like i do but i find in in demos it's better to use the more natural speech default 11 slash uh, 6 slash 2009 l limelighter enter shell folder view explorer pane uh, d sk desktop enter shell folder view l explorer pane Folder lay long, long ago dot tip. Enter. Okay. So here's a TIFF image of a piece called Long, Long Ago. If you took music lessons when you were a kid, you probably played this. Um, your mom made you practice it. Um, so I've opened up the image. So now the image, as I understand, is on the bottom of the screen. Um, we want to read the image of this print music because at this point it's just a photograph. It is grayscale and it's 300 dots per inch. Alt R, menu bar, context menu, read so enter, reading that leaving image now. And Sharp Eyes reading it and trying to basically rebuild the score on the top of the screen. 
And when it's finished, if there are errors, you can kind of look at the bottom and the top and compare and try to see what's missing. Start batch cancel. Start batch button. Cancel button. Add files dot 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 button. To up. activate, press space bar. Remove selected file escape. Sharp I2. Alt R. Menu bar. Context menu. Read. Read. R. Read. Enter. Leaving menus. Sharp I2. I think it's reading now. Reading 2% complete. So Sharp I is reading it and trying to figure out what all this stuff means. Reading 63% complete. Select and modify with left button okay, zero rhythm really warnings. that's the really good news message. Zero rhythm warnings. That's really nice because that means that Sharp Eye is not complaining about anything. It is good to listen back. Alert can. from um, Alt F menu, file menu, L, leaving. No. Alt F menu, Y, leaving menu. Oh, actually, sorry, I don't have my MIDI set up. Properly. Um, but what we'll do is go through the process. So once you've finished scanning in SharpEye and you're happy, you want to export it to the music XML format I talked about. So All I'm going menu. to go to where's that? Acquire Save MIDI sub NIF sub music XML sub menu. Enter. Save S. Save as dot 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 enter. Leaving menus. Long, long ago star sharp I2. Long, long ago. XML. Save as dialog. File name home. Long, long ago. XML. Shell fold. I authorizations. One of fourteen. File name. Combo box. Long enter. Edit. Type in text. Hopefully, put that on my desktop. I'm going to close Sharp Eye. Alt F4. Query from Sharp Eye to dialog. Your music is unsafe. Okay, but space. Menu. Go to my desktop. Post it. Windows D. Leaving menus. Folder L. Lime letter L. Lime lime L. Long long ago. Dot they've checked L. Long long okay. ago. Dot okay, it's XML there. Checked. So now I'm going to start lime. Alt Control L. Task bar. Lime. I'm going to go to the file menu. Import. File menu. Music XML. Music XML. Dot dot enter to import music XML file dialog. And uh, dialog. Folder view list view. Not selected entry in E8 slash 19 slash 2019 11 29 p.m. File folder not checked. L. Alt N. File name colon C. Colon. Backslash. Users. Enter. Edit. Type it. Folder view list. V L. Lime letter D. D. Demo. Enter. Look in colon com. Desk. Desktop 6 slash 3 slash 2. Enter. Look in colon combo box. L. Lime 9.16 examples. L. Long. Long ago. XML 6 slash enter. XML import options. Colon so long. Lime brings up a bunch import of option. import options. I almost never change any of them. I just say fine. I hit enter. Enter. Import music XML dash parsing Co colon from colon long long ago dot XML part underline one dash one bar one beat one treble clef no sharps or flats C major common time and C now I see quarter, I see uh, on my braille display uh, bar one I see the sign for the right hand so this is piano music uh, let's I hit the part down arrow and I went to base. the left hand I can see the left hand sign and the music for the left hand. Um, of course, the print music's on the screen, so that was really pretty painless. I'm going to just play back a bit, and you can sing along at home. Here we go. Key. Here's press enter. Colon for colon long. Long ago dot XM. Okay. So. And playback. And of course. Colon from colon long. Long ago dot XML star page one of the semicolon part of it. We'd want to maybe add a title and some other things. Uh, which are easy to do in line, but for time's sake, I'm just going to launch the field. Alt F, file menu, G, to navigate, press left or right arrow. 
colon from colon long. XML star page one of one seven colon part underline one dash one. Which I've done. And it's when when Goodfield opens up, remember we're passing this music from Lime to Goodfield. And Lime's saying, Goodfield, do what you do best, turn this into Braille music. And Goodfield is probably going to complain about some things because I didn't I didn't add, usually you do need to add a title when something gets scanned with sharp eye. You usually do need to add um, you know, the name of the composer or some other things. So let's see. Bar five beat one. Zoom to move to another line. Good feel. C colon back slap rail. C colon back zoom. Post attendee dash zoom dash just professional. Good feel. So here's good feel. Good feel intermediate dialogue. Lit arrow. No title found. No title yeah, okay. found. No. So it's no complaining, but I, I know that. So I'm gonna check the box. Fix title. Fix. Rail despite critical alert, two parts space alert, rail despite yes. critical error alert. The process. Alt P, rail desk alert, Barbara Aiken head raised rail editor button. And Enter. here is the finished rail score, our Braille viewer. Lime G. And uh, blank. Limbag nine. That's a temporary F number file J D blank. It used because there's blank. no time. But there's a dot C. common time. Here's the right hand. BD dollar up G. Me, me, fa, so, la, so, me. And the left hand and so forth. Okay, cool. So, that was pretty four. quick. And that's Real um that's what All happens when colon things scan perfectly. But as I said, Line. Colon from colon long. scan perfectly. Lee, lamb quitting. Save changes to peace colon from colon. That. No button. Space. Lee, lamb quitting. Save changes to peace colon new. No button, space. Lime is quitting. Error that error sheet. Okay, so let's go back to the, gosh. Um, Zoom is slowing me down. What? I think it's Hang on. Leaving menus, meeting controls. C, U, C, Zoom. Post attendees, Jaws Professional. Windows D, SH, sharp I enter, sharp I to open input another I. image, control I, which is a Haydn Sonata. And open dial. I know that it does have some scanning errors. Authorization H, Haydn Sonata dot TIFF, enter. Okay, again, we've just opened the TIFF image. I'm going to read it. Alt R, context, read, R, enter, so leaving menu. We're back to menu. Sharp Eye now, and Sharp Eye is reading the image, which I scanned from the actual hard copy print score using a flatbed scanner. We found that flatbed scanners do better, and we like the Canons especially, but pretty much any flatbed can work. So now uh, Sharp Eye is looking at this piece by Papa Haydn here. Select and modify with and left six button six rhythm, rhythm warning. warning. There are six places where Sharp Eye is saying, well, I don't really know what to make of this. Now I can press Control E for error. And I can move to control the e. place where the error is. And when I set up my MIDI properly, I can even listen back. But as a blind person, I'm kind of dead in the water. I can tell you that there's a problem, but I can't fix it. So this is where you need a sighted person who can look at the original, determine what the problem is, and then do all the clicking and dragging of the tools in SharpEye to make it, to make it work. Um, I'm going to go into denial and pretend that everything's fine. Um, all def menu, play current, stop playing, play, so music, music XML, XML sub menu, enter, save, save as, save as dot, dot, enter, menu bar, leave the menu bar, hide in Sonata star SharpEye 2, Save as Haydn Sonata dot XML. Enter. Already had one. Save as dialogue. Confirm. Okay. Yes button. Space. Right. You're going to get out Edit. of sharp eye. Type in text. Alt F4. Query. OK. We're space. Go back to Just line. professional. Alt Control L. Task bar. And we're going to import that 
uh, hide in. Welcome to Lime, September 16th, 19th. Import. File menu. XML. Dot I. Import submenu. Import music XML file dialog. Come on. Talk to me. Not selected authorizations one slash twenty five slash two h hide in sonata dot xml okay. six enter and document press control period xml import xml import options again we'll just take all the import enter. options colon from, import music xml dash parsing colon from colon hide in sonata dot xml part underline one dash one r one beat one all right let's class, listen to it and you might hear some obvious problems I don't know the piece very well but let's see you press control h over here here dot key here special enter. From Colin Hyde and Sonata dot XML star. Float it down a bit. Oh, yeah. Now, like some missing stuff. You know, it's not bad. There's a lot of good stuff there. And playback. And with um, a trained user of SharpEye, like my friend Albert, he could probably clean that up in a matter of minutes. And um, and you would have this piece and you could learn it. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about as far as demo is Music XML, because I did export to XML. But there are Music XML files you can get actually from publishers um that are already proofed so uh and you can find some of these for free on the net i found one of john Final philip sousa stars I. and stripes you forever X. to navigate press left or right import music xml file um, i also import found music. well no i think my my friend james risden over there uh kate's brother um Folder view list. Who also, by the way, is a movie star. Um, if you have a chance, there's a movie called Braille Music. It's a wonderful documentary, and James is narrating it and playing in it, and uh, lots of friends and customers from the UK in it. Uh, you can probably find it on Amazon. It's called Braille Music, and um, uh, Goodfield was used to make uh, a Braille copy of the music in the movie. Uh, by a young composer, Zoe Dixon, from the UK. Uh, so anyway, a little trivia there. But uh, James sent me, I think it was James, or somebody over there sent me a whole movement of uh, Mozart Symphony, uh, the 40th. But um, let me see if I can find this Stars and Stripes for everything. S, scan.xml2 slash 12 slash 2020, temp dash shortcut 10, location colon temp left paren C colon right paren, this PC dash shortcut 12 slash 5. Explain. All then, file name colon combo box C. Cobex. Users. Just while Excellent. Bill is doing that, if people want to ask questions, you can raise your hand or put in the chat. We we have about another 10 or 15 minutes and we'll try and wrap this up. So if you have any last minute questions, get them in. I don't know if we have Cancel anything, button. Carl, coming in. All then, file name colon, file, toolbar, toolbar, go to last folder, visited button, to activate, press, look in colon combo box, lime letter DD demo, 305, to change the selection, use the arrow key, enter, file name colon edit combo, to set the value, use the arrow keys, alert, D, D, alert, two participants raised hand, all then, D, end, many folders on this D, computer, wang, wang. toolbar, to end, Toolbar to activate. Press the space bar. Toolbar go to left. Go to last folder. Visited button. Space. PC cart. Go to last folder. Look in colon combo box. Lime letter DD demo. Three of five to change. Lime letter DD demo. Lime letter DD demo. Enter. One drive. Seven of nine. D. Desktop ten of nineteen. Enter. File name colon edit combo to set. The L L. L blank. Toolbar quick. Toolbar go to last folder visited button. Look in colon combo. Lime lighter guide dot zip 19 of 19. L. 
Libraries, 4 of 19. L, Lime Letter DD Demo, 6 of 19. Enter. File name, files of type colon combo box. Folder view list view, not selected 3D objects not checked. 1 of 20 alert, from Kate Riston to all panelists call. Toolbar desktop, toolbar libraries button. Toolbar this PC button. Bill, while you're toolbar doing that, we, I think we have some uh, stuff coming in on chat as well and on okay. um, hands raised. So I don't know, do we want do we want to just go to a few hands, Carl? We, we can do that. Uh, Yes, okay. Well. Let me have a look at the chat yes, here. Over view. Lime letter DD demo checked. Three of twenty two. To move to items, use the arrow. This PC checked. Lime letter DD enter. Looking colon cobble. Not selected. 3D objects not checked. D. Desktop checked. Four of twenty three. Enter. Looking colon uh, cobble box. Did we desktop. do a question from Chrissy who's asking? Can you recommend where I can find out shortcuts for accessible sequencers such as Logic? Uh, and garage band, uh, so where you could find shortcuts for accessible sequencers. Um, you know, I've I've had the same question. I think there's a site called Apple Vis, Apple V I S, uh, yeah. that might be a start, but um, there isn't enough uh, documentation on the on the web for that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that's the best I can tell. Yeah, you. I think Apple Vis is good. Uh, for Tina, who's the lady who was asking about sort of writing some of beginning to get to grips with Braille, Kate Riston is saying learning Braille music, and she's offering help, which is really great. Um, Liz Melbourne is asking, what was the teacher book? It's called Who's Afraid of Braille Music? It's by a guy called Richard Tesh. Tesh, I think. Um, yes. Jess, Music XML Jess Beale is asking a really interesting question, question. Do blind musicians generally read Braille music or prefer to play by ear? And she says, I'm just starting out. And, um, you know, I think Stars personally, the dark. answer to that is, of course, if you've been educated, if you've gone through the uh, quote unquote blind school system or even a system, I suppose, if you've been uh, educated as somebody who is blind in even in the mainstream system, I think Braille music is probably strongly encouraged. But I think it's never too late to start learning. Bill, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. No, I agree. I mean, uh, the, the challenge I've seen for a lot of, of blind people is that by the time they come to Braille music, their uh, playing abilities and their hearing abilities are way beyond what the level of music they want to start with with Braille music. So when you start with, pardon me, when you start with Braille music, it's probably pretty simple music. And if you're used to playing pretty complex music, you might feel a bit bored. But do because alert from Jack Marshall to everyone calling. Yeah. I remember doing the gardeners. Uh, Space. Pay your dues because I have speech on demand. Some customers. We we have customers all over the world now, in fifty some countries, and I've a lot of them in America. And I have talked to a couple people directly who have gone to the graduate level in music studies without learning braille music and then learned it. And they said to me, I could have saved myself so much stress and, and anxiety if I had learned Braille music years ago. So if you can learn it, learn it. On the other hand, I am not one of these purists who's going to tell you Braille music is the only way. It's not, but it's a wonderful way and it's a really excellent way. And if you can learn it, please do. Uh, otherwise, you know, we, our software has the talking score thing. If you're blessed with a good ear, uh, use it. You know, I, I can I can hear things and play them. But if I'm playing in a group where people are reading print music, I want to read the brown music. Um, okay, two uh, one other query from Sean Commons. Really interesting question. Have you considered your company joining forces with Ira or Be My Eyes to assist? And I suppose he's asking in things like proofing scores. So where you had those um, rhythm warnings when you were scanning. Excellent question, Sean. And hello there. Uh, Sean is my friend from uh, the great state of Arizona. Um, yes, uh, and in fact, uh, let me a brief plug here. Tomorrow, uh, we're giving a webinar with my uh, friend Chris Cook, a, a longtime customer. And Chris uh, has a little uh, website called playhymns.com, and she publishes her arrangements of different hymns. And um, she uses Lime. She's totally blind. She uses Lime to make the print. And the last step, uh, Sean, is that she does work with someone at Ira um, 
who who makes sure that the music looks good before she ups, uploads it to her site to sell commercially. She wants to make sure it looks good. So I think we could build on some stuff like that. Um, I think it's a good idea. And that webinar is tomorrow, what time build? Let's see, tomorrow, um, hang on. It, it's going to be 11 o'clock over here, so in the UK. So 5, 5 p.m. in the UK. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be 4 p.m.? I, I don't know. Um, five, five hours at the moment, because you guys are yeah, Eastern. So I'm yeah. starting at 11 in the morning, so that would be 4, right? 4 p.m. Um, sorry, four, sorry, Matt's was clearly never mind. Yeah. <laughs> You're a musician. Oh, what do you mean? 4 okay. p.m. Okay. Uh, Kate Riston is asking, Bill, can I email you after the session about a, a license issue? Please. Um, Yes, so, yes, absolutely. I'd uh, love to hear from you, Kate, and I'm glad you're here tuning in. Um, I did find this thing when you're ready, by the way. I finally... Oh, yeah, just a query. Uh, Jack Marshall says he did the Gardner's Trust uh, Braille Music um, exam, um, and James Risson was his assessor, so uh, that's great. And Edward Bates says Mac can be tricky with logic. He used something called quick keys after moving from a Mac to a Windows machine. So those are stuff on the chat if anybody wants to review it, lots of comments coming in. Uh, so Bill, you have your music XML file. Right, so the, again, to, to reiterate, um, once you learn to, to navigate through Lime and learn to use it to read uh, scores, the question becomes, okay, I, how do I get the scores I want to learn into Lime? And there are three ways. Someone can manually enter them into Lime as, as showed earlier. Someone can scan them with SharpEye and import them into Lime as I showed. But also someone can, if someone, for example, has this in a, in a program say called Sibelius or Finale, there are dozens of music notation programs that are commercially available. People have a lot of scores on hard drives and some of those people are publishers. And so if you can get to the source music XML, really from Jordy Howell to everyone. So one of these I found, which is a very good uh, transcription. I don't know who made it. I found it for free online. It's, it's Stars and Stripes Forever, John Philip Sula arranged for piano. So Stars and Stripes Forever dot XML seven slash three slash two thousand nineteen. Enter. XML import options. Line Use tab to brings up a whole Use bunch of different options, which I rarely change. I'm just going to say, fine. I'm going to hit enter. Enter. Colon from colon stars and stripes forever dot XML left for an import music processing colon from colon stars and stripes forever dot XML piano dash one R one beat one treble clef three flats E flat major cut time fortissimo half equals 120 E flat four. So here it is. From we'll colon stars and listen stripes. to a bit of it. Here dialogue. He. Reading along with the braille, the braille display. Colon from colon and, and uh, the print is tracking on the screen as well. And um, you know that was easy as a few. few clicks. The hardest part was me from finding out what folder it was in. Um, again, I've imported the music XML into Lime. That once I'm happy, again I should probably check some things like titles and uh, some details like that. Alert. But from I'm going to to panelist. launch good file field. menu. Quit launch in manual mode. Dot dot dot. D. Launch good field. Enter. Colon for colon stars and stripes. The rapper dot XML star page one of five semicolon. See how this dash looks one. in hard copy Braille. It comes up in Braille font on the screen for those who can see it, and I see it in Braille on my Braille display, of course. Um, so let's see. Alert. Carry fielding has looked. Braille. To move to an item, press the arrow keys. Task switching. Just perfect Zoom meeting. C C Zoom post attendees. Good feel. Good feel. Inter keyboard. Oh wow. Uh, okay, so right to the format dialog. It didn't have any complaints. That's nice. I'm gonna process. Alt P. Real destination. Enter. Alert from Ed Stevenson to all panelists. Thank you, Stuart, Bill, and everyone. Oh, OMG. you're welcome. Okay, so here it is. 
Stars and stripes forever. I'm, I'm reading uh, in, in comma four. That's a, a point just to make. If you didn't know that, you know, uh, Goodfield does transcribe text. Uh, some people think they have to have Duxbury or some literary translator. It is a standalone thing. So it's showing me the text for the title. Comma John Philip Souza blank comma keyboard blank N seven number A B J C quarter note. Oh no, half note equals 120, three flats, cut time. And there's the braille font uh, for the braille music. It's a word. Alt F4, braille destination, alt X, colon from. So Star again, Center. music XML is the way forward. I'm hoping that the publishing Line. world colon from colon stars and can make some improvements. It's a wonderful thing. It's far from perfect, but it's really good. And, um, uh, R. James, uh, Lime programmer, has done a great job in, in building up Lime's import function for Music XML uh, to where it is. So, uh, anyway, so yeah, three ways to get stuff in there direct entry, um, scan with SharpEye, and import XML. Okay, Bill, this is great. I'm going to go through just a few more things that came in on chat. Uh, right. First of all, J Jordi. Um, I can't stay up as late tomorrow night for your <laughs> webinar, but she's wondering, will it be recorded? I'd be interested to know that as well, actually. Yes, it will, because um, the first couple we've done, I was remiss about recording uh, or started remembering it halfway through, but I think I've successfully set our option in Zoom to just start recording when we... So yes, I do plan to record it, and I'm looking forward to, to you and Chris and seeing how she does this. Okay, and uh, Kerry Fielding is, has just had to leave and we didn't get to Kerry's question. So Kerry had emailed, we have two people who emailed questions in advance and if what I will do is I will forward those to Bill. Um, one was about tabular, tab music for people who play stringed instruments like guitar and ukulele, for example. Um, we had an interesting question from Emma Bishton. Do you have a, a useful list of music theory essentials that people might need to know before they start learning Braille music? Well, actually, the course I referred to earlier, Mr. Tasha's course, uh, Introduction to Music for the Blind Student, he, he breaks it up into phases. And phase one is what he calls music theory. And so he does review uh, basic music theory. It's nothing you know that complicated, but theory in the sense of talking about concepts like uh, pitch and duration and accidentals and um, um, tempo and time signatures and those kinds of basic nuts and bolts of, of music theory as it applies to reading music in print or in braille. Okay, uh, so again, and, and lots of information on your website as well and uh, people can always get in touch with you as you've mentioned. Yes. Contact form where people can get in touch. Yes. Uh, I want to do one more one more quick visual. Uh, yep. I, know, I know you guys know about this device, but there's a device that we've just started to distribute in the US. It's called the Canute 360. And I'm holding it up. And hopefully Carl can see it and everyone who can see it. Yeah. Um, this is great because it has nine lines of braille. And so you can get a subset of the whole page. And in piano music, as I've just shown with the stars and stripes, there's a line for the right hand, there's a line for the left hand. And in braille music, we vertically align the start of each measure. So if I have a single line braille display, I can kind of scrub up and down. But boy, it's really nice to have a multi-line braille display and to be able to just see how things line up without having to do that. Yeah, and we had the guys from the Canute uh, display on a couple of weeks ago, actually, Ed, Ed Rogers from Bristol Braille. So right. uh, really a device that we're, everybody, I think, is very excited about uh, experience, uh, experiencing that multi-line refreshable Braille. Carl, any last hands wavering around there? Um, hang on. No, there's nothing. No, I think we've dealt with all the chat. Right, I'm going to thank Bill sincerely. We nearly got to, uh, Bill went for almost two hours and I'm very conscious that Bill has something else on a little bit later on. So I'm sure you'd like a chance to get a coffee or something. Uh, so yes, thank indeed. you very much for, for, your, for your time today, Bill, for your expertise. But I, I think most importantly, for what you bring to this industry, 
um, you're, you're a great person to be around and a great person to know. And it's your energy and your passion for music literacy and making sure that everybody who needs to has access to music that I think is really, really special. Uh, and I want to thank you for bringing that to our session uh, today. If anybody wants to find out more information, you can Hold contact on. Bill or you can get in touch with us. Bill and Stewart. And well, thanks, thanks, Stuart. Edward. Thanks so much. And you too, Carl, the man behind man. the curtain. Uh, <laughs> this has been a lot of fun. And um, uh, I, yes, thank, thank you for that, that, those encouraging words about passion. That is my passion. I really, really want to share this and, uh, and really get people reading music uh, if they can. You know, just one last little thing. I've met so many sighted people who tell me, well, we have a great kid in, the, in our band. She's playing clarinet. She's sounding good. She plays by ear. She has perfect pitch. She's a great kid. And I say, well, if you don't give her braille music? No, I don't think we, we don't think she needs it. And I say, well, do you have any sighted kids in the band who are really nice kids, practice all the time, sound good, have perfect pitch? Well, yeah. Well, do you take the music away from them? So let's not confuse talent with, uh, with the idea that we want to be literate. And, you know, there are sighted people who are, have all those things, but we still let them read the music. So I'll step down from my soapbox and say thanks <laughs> again. And uh, I know we'll be in touch, guys. So thanks again. All right, Bill. Thank you very much. Thanks to everybody for attending today's session. Uh, we're back next week at 2 p.m. for our next webinar Wednesday installment. Until then, um, from Carl and myself and everyone at Sight and Sound, stay safe and stay well, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you.